Hello everyone and welcome back to the Beer Junkies. Today we are going to be brewing a white IPA. The white IPA is a lesser known style, but it is a collaboration between the Belgian Whip Beer and the American IPA. The aroma of this beer is um, basically a mix of the both. So you're gonna get the cloves and the spices from the, the Belgian yeast, but you're also going to get some of that fruitiness from the American hops. So the, uh, the bitterness is more along the lines of an American IPA, about 40 to 70 IBUs, but it is still very dry and very crisp like the Belgian wet beers are. So if you stick with us, we're going to walk you through our uh, ingredients, the grain bill, the hops we use, the yeast, and our water profile. And then we're also going to walk you through our mashing profile, the mash out, sparging, uh, the boil, the whirlpool, transfer. And then if you stay with us to the very end, we will go through the tasting with you. So stick with us and enjoy. All right, so the water profile for the white IPA is going to be 50 parts per million of calcium, five parts per million of sodium, 105 parts per million of sulfate, and 45 parts per million of chlorides. So it is still an IPA, even though it is the Belgian wit, so we're gonna want more of those sulfates to help accentuate that hot flavor. So. How I'm doing this is I'm adding the calcium chloride, gypsum, and epsom salt like I do for the IPA and double IPA. I'm going to add this to the mash tun and the hot liquor tank. Uh, right now I'm heating the, the hot liquor tank up and filling it up. So once I get it to the volume and temperature I want, I'm going to push that into the mash tun and then we're going to mash in. So I'll be right back to show you our grain bill and then we're going to mash in. So these are the grains that we're going to be using. You can see we've got a ton of rice hulls on top because we are using a large amount of unmalted wheat mixed in with some uh, Belgian Pilsner malt. If you can't get a hold of Belgian Pilsner malt, you can use any kind of European uh, uh, Pilsner malt, that'll be fine. But we are still making a Belgian whipped beer and an IPA. So for the Belgian whipped beer base, it is about 50% Pilsner, 50% of uh, unmalted wheat. Just so, Word of caution, if you're going to be using unmalted wheat, you're going to have to do a step match to really get all of that extract out of that wheat. If you are not able to do a step match, you can use either flaked wheat or torrefied wheat and then stick with a single infusion. Uh, we would caution against any malted wheat. If you use malted wheat, it's gonna to be too much like an American wheat beer. All right, so this is our mashing setup for the white IPA. We are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it through our wort pump into the lower part of the Herms coil, it's coming out of the upper part of the Herms coil, and then going through our mashing ring. See it flowing nicely through. So right now we are in the uh, protein rest at 130-ish degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna hold it here for 15 to 20 minutes and then we're going to raise it to 152 degrees for 60 minutes. After that, we're going to mash out at 168 degrees and then we're going to begin to sparge. All right, we just got to uh, the end of mashing, so I'm starting mash out. So I have set the hot liquor tank to about 10 degrees higher than I want it to be, and the mash tun is slowly heating up. So once it gets to about 166, 168 degrees, we're going to begin to sparge. These are the hops that we use for the white IPA. We use Columbus as our bittering. You can use any high alpha acid hop that you want for the bittering. And then for the flavor and aroma hops, we use Amarillo. You can use any American uh, hop that is citrusy or floral for that aroma and flavor hop. And then the amount that you use depends on if you want it to lean more towards Belgian or more towards American IPA. Uh, if you want it to be more like the American IPA and get more of those citrus flavors, and add more of that flavor and aroma if you want to be more like Belgian, add less flavor and then no aroma, really. Um, so for this recipe, we're going to be adding about 20 IBUs worth at the 15 minute mark, and then we're going to be adding about half an uh, ounce per five gallons at flame out. Uh, you can dry hop this if you want, we won't. We want it to be a nice balance between the two. All right, we just got to mash out, so now we are sparging. So we are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it into the boil kettle over there. At the same time, I'm pulling the sparge water from the hot liquor tank through our pump, going up into the mash tun to rinse the rest of the residual sugars from those grains. 
after the sparge is done, we'll bring it to a boil. We'll boil it for 90 minutes and then we'll pull. We just got to a boil, so we will add the hops in as we need to, and then we will be back when it is time to whirlpool. We just finished the boil, so we are whirlpooling. We are pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through the pump into the tangential input. This will pull all of the proteins, hops, and chug to the center of the boil kettle. We just finished a whirlpool, so now we are knocking out, pulling wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump into the heat exchanger over here. You can see that we are putting oxygen right into that wort, pushing it in at about 62 degrees, going all the way down here into our fermenter, where you can see we are pushing out all the excess air as we push that wort into the fermenter. This is the yeast that we use. It is the Belgian Wit Ale Yeast from White Labs, WLP400. It will produce all of those phenols you want to give you the spices you're expecting from that Belgian ale yeast, but it is also very highly attenuating, so it will give you a very crisp beer. We ferment the white IPA at 67 degrees until it is done. When it gets within about five to six uh, gravity points of final gravity, we will raise it to 72 degrees for uh, the diacetyl rest, and then we will cold crash it to 33 degrees and then we will transfer the bright tank where we carbon it to about 2.7 volumes. All right, this is what we made. You can see that it has got that golden hazy color. It's got a white head on the smell. I get those spices from the Belgian yeast, but I also do get some of that stitches from the Amarillo. They do balance very nicely for the taste. I get that strong grainy backbone from the unmalted wheat and that Pilsner and a little bit of the, um, the citrus from the Amarillo and then the spices from that Belgian yeast as well. But I wouldn't say any of those flavors are overpowering. They do balance very nicely. This is actually very crisp and very refreshing. I'm surprised how you, I like this one as much as I do. We're over the age of 21. We do not condone underage drinking. Please drink responsibly. Cheers. If you would like more exclusive brewing content, make sure you click that subscribe button right below. And if you would like to see more recipes just like this one, feel free to visit our website, thebeerjunkies.com. We have a whole library full of beer recipes that you can browse through. Cheers.